Sea of Trust, serving Micronesia since 1938. Matson, celebrating 25 years of commitment to Guam, Micronesia, and the CNMI. Cars Plus Hyundai, home of the Kona Electric Vehicle, an electric heart with an SUV soul. Test drive yours today at Cars Plus. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Ahead on primetime, CNMI Governor Ralph Torres has been impeached by the CNMI House of Representatives on all six articles of impeachment. Plus, is this the fourth COVID surge? The governor's physician's advisory group chairman seems to think so. And in Superior Court, Juan Mendiola is sentenced to 25 years for a 2020 killing. Hoffity and good evening. I'm Tyler Matanani. Topping our newscast this evening, the CNMI House of Representatives voted to impeach Governor Ralph Torres after two years worth of investigations, which reached a tipping point in recent months. Regional correspondent Tomas Manglonia reports. Ralph de Leon Guerrero Torres, Governor of the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands, is hereby impeached pursuant to Article 2, Section 8 of the Constitution of the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands. Lawmakers reading the 16-page House resolution detailing the six articles of impeachment against Governor Torres. Fifteen members voted yes, four voted no, and one abstained across the board. Torres's Republican allies not breaking rank, while factions of those in the Democratic Party and independent Republicans backing Lieutenant Governor Arno Palacios pushed the articles through the two-thirds threshold needed to impeach him. We are here today because Governor Torres is unfit to continue in public service. His offenses against the Commonwealth warrant his impeachment and removal from office. And we, the legislature, the first branch of government, have a duty to hold him accountable and prevent any further harm to the people's trust. The governor now charged with two articles of felony commission, two articles of corruption, and two articles of neglect of duty, and now moves to the Senate for a trial. Crowds of supporters for and against impeachment gathered outside the legislature, with many filing in to deliver hours worth of public comments, including the governor's brother. Lo, hamdun ni man, hamdun man, hamdun man, man served in si governor, in tingwa si governor na kasintaw to. Ti kuminat. Ta zengin gwa ha baba bidaw niya, in tingwa na ta zeng tinsyon po chogwi no. A former confidant also speaking out in support of impeachment. I would advise my friend, a resignation brings unity to our people, brings stability to the cinema so that we can start rebuilding. I hope my friend is listening and the governor in him will step up to the plate and makes the right decision and resign to bring unity and peace to our people and the cinema. The governor has denied all charges and maintains his innocence. At a recent press conference, he acknowledged the likelihood of impeachment and says he looks forward to a fair trial in the Senate. Tomas Manglotnia for KOAM News. CNMI Governor Ralph Torres responded to the news of his impeachment saying, quote, I have not done anything illegal. Those who choose to accuse me of wrongdoings choose to remain blind to the fact that progress and good work continues in the Marianas for my supporter for my supporters and non-supporters alike. The chairman of the governor's physicians advisory group believes that we are in the midst of our fourth COVID surge, but we should get through it in a couple of weeks. Dr. Nathaniel Berg also says that the quick spreading but less virulent Omicron variant could represent the light at the end of the tunnel. Nestor Lacanto reports. Dr. Berg was responding to the governor's announcement Tuesday night of 422 new COVID cases. It generally peaks at about three weeks. So we think in Guam, maybe a month. So you're talking about February 1-ish. I hope that we will start slowing down. Um, again, our peak is probably, I hope it's 400, but it's not going to surprise anybody um, uh, who's been working with this. If it 
if it peaks at around 600. And while 600 infections in a single day may sound alarming, Berg reminds that with Omicron, which he absolutely believes is fueling this new surge, hospitals are not filling up with really sick people. And if it were to run its course and not impact critical frontline personnel, that might not be an altogether bad thing. Point of fact, I had a, a friend who is a healthcare provider who said, I hope I get Omicron. I'm not going to go so far as to say that, but I'd say if one is in the mainstream or in the big population, this should not be a threat to those who are not significantly ill. And if you have, are fully vaccinated or fully protected and you get Omicron and you do well, the reality is, right, at least I would say the preliminary data shows that those people are highly protected. If we can get through this without uh, many people getting hospitalized and dying and not a threat to our uh, overall function of the community, we may come out of this stronger. I'm optimist, cautiously optimistic that that's what's going to happen. He says it's reasonable because a similar thing happened in the last global pandemic of 1918, when the dominant variant eventually became fast spreading, but less deadly. In medical school, we were told that it died out because it had uh, altered or became a variant that was very infectious but didn't kill people. And it went away after that because that was the dominant variant. We don't find alpha variant anymore. We don't find Delta variant. We hope Omicron is done and no new variant will be able to infect people who um, have the combination of inf uh, prior infection and vaccination. So Omicron could be the endemic variant if, the, if there is such a thing? Pray hard, <laughs> yes. That we, and, but it's not an unreasonable thing to pray for. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor. You can catch Nestor's full interview with Dr. Berg on in full Zoom right after news prime time. We turn now to COVID and the lightning fast spread of the Omicron variant and the strain it's putting on America's hospitals. It's also putting a strain on America's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, who got into a heated back and forth at a hearing today in the Senate. CBS's Elise Preston reports from Chicago. As the Omicron variant wreaks havoc on our nation's health system, tension on how to handle the surge is spreading too. You are making a catastrophic epidemic for your political gain. So the you only have thing politically that, the only attacked thing your can... colleagues. During a Senate hearing, Dr. Anthony Fauci accused Senator Rand Paul of raising political donations with personal attacks. That kindles the crazies out there, and I have life that threats upon my life, harassment of my family and my children with obscene phone calls because people are lying about me. Tonight, COVID hospitalizations are rising in 43 states. Medical centers are treating more than 116,000 inpatients a day, a 40% jump from just last week. And as COVID cases have quadrupled in about a month, the CDC is considering a change in its mask recommendations, backing N95 and KN95 masks, which offer the best protection. According to the CDC, a person wearing a cloth mask standing within six feet of an unmasked individual with COVID can become infected within 20 minutes, while it would take two and a half hours for a person wearing an N95 mask. A typical cloth mask might be 50% effective, and that was okay before. It doesn't seem to be enough with Omicron. So an N95 offer much greater protection. They're able to block 95% of particles. Still, there are signs that the surge of Omicron infections may have crested in the Northeast. The cases are slowing down, the rate of increase is slowing down, um, but they're still high. With testing among the first line of defense, at-home testing kits remain in short supply and testing lines long. Doctors warn, stay away from overcrowded hospitals. There's really no need to come to the emergency room just to be tested. You're gonna take up resources and space that are needed for people who are more sick. People will soon get a little relief when it comes to at-home testing costs. Starting Saturday, Americans can get reimbursed for eight tests a month through their private insurance. And a new real-world study shows the Abbott Buy Next Now test can detect the vast majority of people with Omicron. Elise Preston, CBS News, Chicago. 
Here at home, be sure to save your receipts as residents who paid for at home COVID test kits may be reimbursed soon. According to Calvo Select Care Plan Administrator Frank, Frank Campio, quote, regarding test reimbursements and coverage, we are waiting on the tri-agency guidance on this, which should come on or around January 15th. This is part of the Biden administration's plan to make test kits more, afford more affordable for people to check if they are contracted the COVID-19 virus and limit the spread of Omicron. Campio added that this is a federal mandate, so companies will have to comply according to the regulations issued by the Health and Human Services, U.S. Treasury and Labor. Guam continues to see triple-digit cases each day, but could it be because of the Omicron variant? Daniel Perez reports. Since Monday, more than 700 cases have been reported. Public Health Interim Chief Medical Officer Dr. Bob Leon Guerrero gave his two cents on the matter. I think we're still seeing a lot of Delta, and the reason why I think we're still seeing a lot of Delta is because uh, some of the complaints that the people have is lost of a sense of uh, taste or smell, and that's not typical with Omicron, that's typical with Delta. The current treatment, the monoclonal antibody therapy Regeneron, can prevent hospitalizations and lessen the severity of the illness. However, Dr. Leon Guerrero says it doesn't respond to the Omicron variant. He added that public health checks on patients who receive the MEB therapy to see if they get better or not. Only two reported that they didn't seem to be improving, so that to me kind of makes it more likely that we're still seeing a good percentage of Delta. Uh, in the States, it's like, a, I think it's about 98%, 99% Omicron. But we kind of tend to follow the, the mainland. So uh, just about two weeks, I think about two weeks ago, it was 68%. So I believe Omicron's here, but not in the percentage that you see in the mainland. For cases that aren't responding to the antibody therapy, the next treatment is on the way in the form of a pill. There are uh, antivirals that are coming. When it comes, I'm not too sure. But uh, so what we plan on doing is, you know, when we get uh, people that are uh, at high risk, um, we'll go, have them go get the Regeneron. And it, once we start getting the other antivirals, if we call them two days later and they're not improving, then we... Uh, get them hooked up with the, the new antivirals. Dr. Leon Guerrero but continues to stress point, the importance of getting the complete series of a vaccine plus a booster for better protection against COVID and its other variants. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, an infection of a fully vaccinated person is referred to as a vaccine breakthrough infection. Breakthrough cases are bound to happen since the vaccines are not 100% effective. However, the risk of infection, hospitalization, and death are all much lower in vaccinated people compared to those unvaccinated. Daniel Perez reporting for Guam's News Network. The Monoclonal Antibody Center is still up and running treating residents who need it. Public Health Interim Chief Medical Officer Dr. Bob Leon Guerrero told KUM how many patients it sees now with the recent uptick in new cases. Dr. Leon Guerrero added that the MAB treatment site has enough doses to keep up with the demand and assures residents that public health continues to order more. Since some patients are not responding to the MAB therapy, public health has ordered the COVID antiviral pill to help those who aren't responding to the current treatment. This has Speaker Therese Trelawhi asking how public health will determine what treatments are for which patients. There is no word yet as to when the antiviral pills will arrive. However, the genome sequencing machine that DPHS or DPHSS ordered should be arriving this month. 25 years for killing Peter Rios. That's how much time Juan Mendiola is sentenced to serve. Here's more from Superior Court. When it came to determining how long 58-year-old Juan Mendiola would spend in prison, Assistant Attorney General Sean Brown wanted 40 years, but Defense Counsel Joseph Rosano wanted eight, with credit for time served. Mr. Rios would have killed him. Last year, Mendiola was found guilty of manslaughter and aggravated assault for fatally shooting 45-year-old Peter Rios at Titano Apartments in May of 2020. During trial, an eyewitness testified she heard Mendiola and Rios getting into a verbal argument. When she walked out, she saw the victim holding a knife and Mendiola with a gun. 
Mendiola fired two shots 23 seconds apart at the victim while saying, quote, I told you not to F with me, according to a release from the AG's office. Rosano argued that Rios was a troubled man who often found himself in and out of prison. Both federal and local uh, was threatening to his mom, was threatening to his girlfriend, and was generally a dangerous individual. But presiding judge Alberto Lamarena maintained that regardless of what is thought of the victim's background, our society focuses on the fact that someone was killed. Mendiola addressed the court, apologizing for his actions. I'll continue my praying for Pete and the Ruth family and my family and <clears throat> the honor. I surrender myself to the Lord and I was just defending myself that day, your honor. But during the trial, Attorney Brown argued that self-defense ended when an argument ensued and that Mendiola could have left the residence. He was ultimately sentenced for the following charges, 15 years for manslaughter and 10 years for possession and use of a deadly weapon in the commission of a felony. The sentence will run concurrently, having him serve a total of 25 years with credit for time served. He's so far been in prison for 616 days. Attorney Rosano gave his reaction. Disappointed. Uh, I don't think he... Anyway, disappointed. Mendiola will be on parole for three years upon his release. Once again, we invite you to voice your view across our social media pages with our daily question. Today, we want to know, do you think there should be more COVID-19 testing sites on island? We'll share responses on the link. Stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. Get up to the minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. It's beautiful. It is, right, baby? Dad, isn't that where we usually stop for gas? It's where we used to stop, but not anymore. But isn't that the place with the milkshakes? Okay, all right, all right, let's go. Get it out, kids. <laughs> Take your adventure further in the first ever Santa Fe Hybrid. Don't need to work, babe, keep the smile on your face. The moments you can't replay, and I'll be around. Wherever life takes you, we're always here for you. Calvo's Insurance. Count on us for life. Do you feel like you're missing out on something? Make life more rewarding with Pacific Points. Earn and redeem points for bill rebates and free load at it &E. Discounts on fuel at Shell vouchers at Foodies, and United Mileage Plus Miles. You can even pay with Pacific Points at it &E, Shell, and Foodies. Pacific Points. Do more, get more. Let us know what's up on our KOM News WhatsApp tip line at 671-727-0094. Share information about what's happening in your town on Guam or the CNMI and what you want us to know. Reach us on WhatsApp at 671-727-0094. And welcome back. Students and graduates who were enrolled in, in school year 2020 to 2021 at all 41 Guam Department of Education schools can expect over $400 loaded into their Pandemic Electronic Benefits Transfer Cards, or PEBT. According to GDOE Interim Public Information Officer Michelle Franquez, students will receive $483. She mentioned that GDOE submitted master lists to public health. As KUAM News reported, DPHSS and GDOE distributed PEBT cards to students and families in August, which can be used to purchase food similar to SNAP or food stamps. The PEBT program addresses the meals lost while Guam Department of Education schools were shut down during pandemic. Franquez noted that it's still unclear on when students can expect the money to be loaded into the cards. 
an almost $45 million contract for the construction of magazines at Anderson Air Force Base has been awarded to Hensel Phelps Construction Company out of Honolulu, Hawaii. The task order contains nine unexercised options, which, if exercised, could increase the cumulative task order value to a little over $76 million. Work will be performed on Joint Region Marianas and is expected to be completed by January 2025. The Naval Facilities Engineering Systems Command Pacific Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam, Hawaii, is the contracting activity. One hotel on the island is hoping to bring back some sort of normalcy to the resort. However, with the lack of manpower, they say it's challenging to do so. KUM's Isaiah Uggin has this report. The COVID-19 pandemic has impacted the workforce for many businesses across the globe, forcing many establishments to shut down or adapt to those challenges. The Westin Resort Guam and Tumon is one of many victims of this global pandemic. The Westin um, has also seen a, that effect in our workforce as well. So we are taking this opportunity to invite talent, invite qualified people to come here, um, see what we, are ha we have to offer and, you know, um, start a new career with us here at the Westin. The Westin is faced with a labor shortage, causing the hotel to not fully function as a result of the COVID pandemic. So if you've gone to the Westin recently, you can see that our restaurants aren't fully open. We used to be open every day, um, breakfast, lunch and dinner, for example, for taste. But because of the uh, shortage in work, workforce and manpower, we've struggled to go back to normal. With the current situation with the pandemic, um, this is actually our third job fair. Uh, within a year's span. So we've been able to hire people with each of our job fairs, but it's defi definitely been a bit more uh, challenging for us to recruit people uh, into the West End. Is it, is it difficult to retain them after you're hiring these people? I would say we've been able to retain most of the people that we've hired in our past job fairs. Weston hosted a job fair this morning, hoping to restore their workforce and bring back operations to normal. So with this job fair, we're looking for um, actually a lot of exi exciting things that are happening in the hotel. Um, a lot of things that we want to move forward with, um, but until we have the proper workforce, we can't do that. Meanwhile, we spoke with 28-year-old Joseph Jacob, who applied to be a housekeeper, security agent, and or guest relations representative. He says that he wanted to experience something different. Trying something new, mm -hmm. and I just saw the ad, so it was like, why not? Joseph, a former sales associate at the Guam Home Center for about a year, explained how the COVID pandemic has affected him. Not really much. I mean, everything sucks, but it's still okay. Did you lose a job during the pandemic? Uh, I did. But I mean, uh, family just wanted us to stay home and just look out for each other. So, yeah. Interested island residents who missed the job fair can still apply online at their website. Currently, Weston requires employees to be fully vaccinated against the COVID virus or must submit to weekly testing. Reporting for Guam News Network, Guahusi Isaiah Ogun. Are you looking to join the food and beverage industry? If so, IHOP Guam will be hosting a job fair tomorrow into Monday as the Pancake House is starting 2022 fresh and plans to reopen soon. IHOP is hiring for, for all positions such as cooks, servers, dishwashers and hostesses. Job seekers must apply in person. The job fair is set for 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Thursday, January 13 at IHOP in Timonin. Every day, 600,000 pounds of trash are dumped at the landfill here on Guam. In order to make a difference, an island-wide school competition will be held. KOM's Hannah Devonzo has this report. 600,000 pounds of trash every day is alarmingly high for a small island, according to Manyaka de Oro from Micronesia Climate Change Alliance. The key to creating this change could be through the younger generations. By giving the young students something to tackle, like an art project, even though it's just a, a simple art project, it could get their wheels turning to be inventive and to, to um, find innovations that we haven't even thought of yet. K-12 through students in the competition will have to transform trash into sculptures or art pieces. There's so many different types of examples that they can use to create something, but create something that's relevant to our community. So they'll have to create 
um, either a local animal or a local um, tree or flower or represent like a, in a diorama, um, a local legend um, or even regional. It doesn't have to just be Guam. It could be from anywhere in Micronesia or from Oceania. Teachers have until January 31st to register their students. The sculptures will be displayed at the Guam Premier Outlets from April to August, where island residents can vote on their favorite ones. The top three winners will receive prizes. If you're interested in registering, visit their social media page, Micronesia Climate Alliance, or email them at micronesiaclimatealliance at gmail.com. Reporting for Guam Sioux Network, I'm Hannah Devonzo. Stay with us. Coming up next on KUAM News Sports with Dave Delgado. And still to come, your Cold Stone Creamery Marie birthday shout outs. You don't want to miss that. Keep it here. You're watching KUAM. wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels that transport containers of food, household items, equipment and supplies into the islands every week. Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. And you can count on us to be here for generations to come. Guam is truly a majestic place with its sheer natural beauty, wealth of beaches, and culturally rich landscape. Unfortunately, Guam has a real problem with unwanted invasive species. Help us in preventing their introduction and spread. The coconut rhinoceros beetle, the little fire ant, the African snail, Siam weed. These are just a few of the numerous invasives on Guam. Follow proper custom procedures when bringing plants and animals into Guam. Help protect Guam. Tell your family and friends about invasive species. To report invasive species, call 475-PEST. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Great turnout for the inaugural Rising Stars showdown at the GW Field. The high school football game was dedicated to freshmen and sophomore players. The Phenoms team comprised of players from FD, Guam High, Simon Sanchez, and Tizen High, led 14-6 late in the fourth quarter. Thrashers shooting up players from Southern, GW, JFK, and Ukadu. Gecko's quarterback Ricardo Leon Guerrero goes deep and hits Jonathan Cruz, who gets stopped just short of the end zone. Josiah Mendiola takes the handoff up the middle for the touchdown. He gets a big push from the offensive line and goes in for the score. Thrashers down 14-12 with the game on the line. They go with the big back set. Jermaine Molo lines up behind Mendiola and follows him to the left side of the line again. Molo ties the game at 14, sending the game into overtime. Phenom's defense hold it down on four straight plays and end it with a Deshaun Bird touchdown run for the 20-14 win. Guam Football Association President Valentino Singil and General Secretary Joseph Peta signed into effect the GFA Internal Organization Regulations, an official document outlining the structure and duties of GFA committees during the 2022 GFA Committee Induction Event held at the Hilton Guam Resort and Spa. 
Signing the GFA internal organization regulations into immediate effect is a crucial step in professionalizing GFA's operations through the support of the organization's standing ad hoc committees, said Joe Cepeda, GFA general secretary. Congrats to all of the rugby players from across the nation who were selected to participate in the National Collegiate Rugby's All-Star Shield Challenge. Dartmouth men's rugby player Matias Calvo was selected as one of many players representing teams at the Division I, Division II, and small college level. Calvo was on the New England Independence Red roster, who are one of eight teams competing January 15th through the 16th at the Aviva Stadium home of the Houston Sabercats. Fans can catch the stream of the game at ncrugby.org. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Building on the past, we at Docomo Pacific Business believe in helping businesses move forward and together, changing the way we get things done to make you and your company reach your highest potential. Trust in our commitment to bring you the best solutions for all your business goals. We are Docomo Pacific Business. Let's work better together. I didn't get screened because I was just afraid of it. I procrastinated. I didn't have any symptoms. I didn't have insurance. I didn't want to know. There were several services that was available to me. I got a mammogram. Colonoscopy. I know in my heart that that early detection saved my life. And I just tell people all the time, please go get screened. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shout outs from the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. Happy birthday to Francis Perez. Happy birthday to you. Love your grandkids, Joaquin, Theo, Jonah, Michael, and Abigail. We love you. God bless you on your special day and always. And happy birthday to Francis Perez and Eleanor Cruz, both sisters and birthday twins, born exactly a year apart. God bless you. Say Ellie, love the family. And that's going to do it for us here on Primetime. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Tyler Matanani. Have a good night and be safe, Guam. Hello and hot day, everybody. I'm Jason Salas, and welcome to Health, Home, and Lifestyle right here on KUM.